Hungarian doctor Ignaz Semmelweis was the first to link hand hygiene to the spread of disease in the 1840s. Through careful experimentation and rigid adherence to cleanliness, Semmelweis pioneered the practice of hand washing. Ignaz Semmelweis was born on July 1, 1818 in what would become the city of Budapest. Semmelweis grew up in an affluent family that could afford to educate all eight of their children. He was the fifth child of two successful shopkeepers. Semmelweis initially began studying law based on his father's advice, but after attending an anatomy class in 1838, he decided to transfer and study medicine. He completed his first degree at the University of Pest and completed his doctorate of medicine in 1844 at the University of Vienna. While obstetrics wasn't Semmelweis's first choice for his specialty, his Hungarian background and Jewish origins relegated him towards less desirable divisions. In 1846, Semmelweis was appointed to work as an assistant in the maternity ward at the Vienna General Hospital. The notion that sickness can be caused by things that can't be seen has been around for thousands of years. However, it took a long time for this idea to meaningfully impact the habits of some. During the Middle Ages, Islam advanced various medical practices, especially using alcohol as an antiseptic. But up until the 19th century, a majority of Europe believed in the miasma theory of disease transmission. The miasma theory held that disease was caused by inhaling bad air that had been corrupted by its exposure to something. However, while disease can travel by air, the miasma theory limited the understanding of the spread of infection to noticeably bad smells. It smells disgusting! No, wait! It smells amazing! Like the boys' locker room on a hot summer day. Gross! Gross. Great! Great. Unfortunately, this limited understanding made it all the more difficult to convince people in 19th century Britain that cholera outbreaks were being caused by polluted water. The miasma theory prevailed around the world for hundreds of years. People in America shut the windows at night to prevent bad air from coming into the house. In China, medical schools were built to find a cure for miasma. The theory of germ and microorganisms causing infections was sporadically acknowledged across Europe, but it wouldn't be accepted widely until Louis Pasteur's silkworm experiment. That groundbreaking work proved that microbes were destroying silkworm eggs, not the abstract concept of miasma. It greatly expanded the understanding of contagious diseases. On July 1, 1846, Semmelweis began working at the obstetrics division of the Vienna General Hospital. The hospital had two obstetric divisions, the first, which was staffed by medical students and physicians, and the second division, which was staffed by midwives. It was here that Semmelweis noted that the post-delivery mortality rate at the first division clinic was drastically higher than the rate at the second division clinic. The difference in maternal mortality rates may have been even higher. This is because, during times of especially high mortality, many women were transferred to the general hospital. As a result, their deaths were incorporated into the statistics for the general hospital instead of the maternity hospital. Almost all of the maternal deaths at the time were a result of puerperal fever, also known as childbed fever. Puerperal fever, now known to be caused primarily by the bacterium Streptococcus pyogenes, was blamed on a variety of different causes, including the cold, sewage, mists, or putrid tendencies. But Semmelweis couldn't ignore the discrepancy between the two divisions' maternal mortality rates. Even his superior chalked it up to the ventilation system, but Semmelweis knew that there was something else going on. The death rate hadn't always been that high at the hospital. Before 1823, the maternal and newborn mortality rate at the Vienna General Hospital was closer to 1%, but then there was a policy change that mandated medical students and doctors to practice autopsies on top of their other duties. Many even went straight from autopsies to delivery rooms, rarely washing their hands in between. Suddenly, maternal mortality rates jumped up to 7.5%. Semmelweis noticed that midwives at the 2nd Division weren't required to perform autopsies, and as a result, this division didn't suffer from staggeringly high mortality rates. The midwives at the 2nd Division also didn't perform gynecological exams as often on pregnant women, which also decreased the experienced exposure. Semmelweis proposed that the transference of cadaverous particles from dead bodies was responsible for the increased mortality rates in the 1st Division clinic. His certainty grew after his friend died in 1847. Semmelweis's friend had been conducting an autopsy on a woman who died of puerperal fever when he'd gotten cut by a scalpel. He died shortly after of the same disease, and his autopsy revealed a massive infection. Semmelweis realized that the interaction with the cadavers was consistent with puerperal infections and that women who claimed that the doctors were harbingers of death were possibly onto something. While Ignaz Semmelweis himself didn't suggest that germs were the culprits behind infections, his description of cadaverous particles bears as close a resemblance as possible. 
Interestingly, he didn't know exactly what the cadaverous particles were, so Semmelweis adhered to the logic of the miasma theory. Semmelweis noticed that when doctors examined women in labor, even if they washed with soap and water, the smell of cadavers lingered on their hands. In response to this, and per the logic of miasma, he instituted a new rule. Medical students and doctors were required to wash their hands in a chlorinated lime solution. This solution was best at removing the smell of dead bodies from their hands. Semmelweis required that anyone entering the labor ward was required to disinfect their hands in this manner. Within three months, from June to August 1847, the change in death rates was dramatic. Maternal mortality rates in the first division clinic fell to 1.8%, similar to the rates at the second division clinic. When death rates spiked again in October and November, Semmelweis began requiring attendees to wash their hands in between examining individual patients. By 1848, the death rates at the First Division Clinic had fallen to 1.27%, even less than the rates at the Second Division Clinic. After confirming the effects of his theory of disinfection, Semmelweis and some of his colleagues wrote to various maternity clinics urging them to adopt a policy of hand washing. Semmelweis didn't initially publish his experiment, although the results were published in an editorial in December 1847 in the Journal of the Medical Society of Vienna. Semmelweis and his colleagues reached out directly to heads of maternity clinics across Europe, inviting their comments. Unfortunately, few of the responses were positive. Many doctors resented the suggestion that they might be the cause of their patients' deaths. Semmelweis was also not the first to make the suggestion, having been preceded by obstetrician Alexander Gordon of Aberdeen in 1795. There was also anatomist Oliver Wendell Holmes in 1843, but these theories weren't widely accepted. Despite Semmelweis' successful experiment at the Vienna General Hospital, without published proof of experimentation and exploration, doctors refused to accept the validity of his findings. Semmelweis' lecture was published in various medical journals, such as The Lancet. But since Semmelweis wasn't directly communicating his theories, it was frequently misrepresented and misinterpreted as a result. Even some of Semmelweis' colleagues tried to purposely sabotage his implementation of handwashing. But despite the resistance, Semmelweis stuck to his theory and maligned doctors who didn't subscribe to it as murderers. Semmelweis's post at the Vienna General Hospital was a two-year contract, and his supervisor, Johann Klein, decided not to extend Semmelweis's contract. Klein had been the one to introduce the practice of post-mortem autopsies and was likely irritated by Semmelweis's efforts. Klein considered puerperal fever to be unpreventable and thought that while the statistics of childbed mortality were unpleasant, they were unavoidable. When Semmelweis' contract wasn't renewed, he returned to Budapest and took on a non-paying position as the head of obstetrics and gynecology at St. Roku's Hospital. While there, he tasked himself with reducing maternal mortality and instituted the practice of chlorinated handwashing. His efforts weren't for naught. During his six years at St. Roku's Hospital, the maternal mortality rate was 0.85%. In 1857, Semmelweis also married Maria Vadenhofer, with whom he had five children. During the same time period, the maternal mortality rates in Prague and Vienna from childbed fever were upwards of 10 to 15%. In 1855, Semmelweis was also appointed Professor of Theoretical and Practical Midwifery at the University of Pest. He instituted the practice of disinfection there as well, and was able to keep the rate of maternal mortality below 1%. Overall, Semmelweis's theory was widely rejected. Many doctors claim that doctors are gentlemen, and gentlemen's hands are clean. The job of a physician was considered to be divinely blessed, so doctors considered it unfathomable that they might be responsible for sickness. Unfortunately, Semmelweis learned a harsh lesson, as explained by professor of biology Miriam Warman. If you try to go against authority and convention, uh, you can run into uh, and, and make some enemies. Many also thought that washing hands in between every single patient would simply take too much time. Plus, to allow for this, entire hospitals would have to be built so that running water in sinks could be easily accessible. All in all, few were willing to accept the validity of Semmelweis' findings. Many doctors even insisted that the condition arose within the pregnant women themselves. The professor of obstetrics at the University of Pass thought that puerperal fever occurred as a result of an unclean bowel. Other doctors thought that childbed fever occurred because mothers were embarrassed about being examined by doctors who were men. Semmelweis's contemporaries believed that there were upwards of 30 different causes of childbed fever. Some obstetricians, such as Gustav Adolf Michaelis, introduced Semmelweis's methods and found that they had the same drop in mortality. But the discovery that childbed fever was so easily preventable sent Michaelis into a depression at the thought of how many women had unnecessarily succumbed. He killed himself in 1848. In 1857, Semmelweis finally began publishing his findings. 
He was encouraged by Lajos Markashovsky and published his findings in the journal Hungarian Medical Weekly. Semmelweis responded directly to the English contagionists, who claimed that Semmelweis was nothing new, and reiterated his belief that puerperal fever was caused by decaying organic matter. In 1861, Semmelweis finally consolidated his ideas and published the book The Etiology, Concept, and Prophylaxis of Childbed Fever. In this text, Semmelweis formally laid out his implementation of chlorinated hand washing along with its rate of success and his theory of cadaveric material. He also responded directly to his opponents and their criticisms. This text also received negative reviews, which prompted Semmelweis to lash out through his series of open letters in 1861 and 1862. Semmelweis had no patience for doctors who refused to accept responsibility for their actions and denounced obstetricians who rejected him as irresponsible murderers and ignoramuses. Unfortunately, this did little to further his case. In his text, Semmelweis also lamented the rejection of his theories, noting that in 1854 alone, in Vienna, the birthplace of my theory, 400 maternity patients died from childbed fever. In published medical works, my teachings are either ignored or attacked. Semmelweis was not only ridiculed by colleagues, but by family and friends as well. Despite the resistance, Semmelweis refused to abandon his crusade and rarely talked of anything other than childbed fever. In 1861, Semmelweis began suffering from mental health issues. He reportedly began to experience severe depression and was noted to be excessively absent-minded. Many considered his behavior to be irrational, odd, and inappropriate. While many have tried to attribute Semmelweis's condition to Alzheimer's, syphilis, or dementia, it's possible that Semmelweis merely suffered from emotional stress that was exacerbated by dismissal and mockery of his theories. Semmelweis continued to bitterly attack doctors and critics, but his spirit was breaking. By 1865, he was drinking heavily. He also started frequenting sex workers and spending time away from his family. In response to his behavior, Semmelweis's family decided that it would be best to remove Semmelweis from public life. Ignaz Semmelweis's colleagues and wife thought he was becoming too much of an embarrassment and conspired to have him committed. In 1865, they were able to lure Semmelweis into a mental hospital. Although Semmelweis quickly figured out what was going on and tried to escape, he was severely beaten by the orderlies and put into a straitjacket. It was likely during this beating, although it may have been during subsequent beatings, that Semmelweis received a fatal blow. One of his injuries became infected, and within two weeks of being admitted into the mental hospital, Semmelweis died of generalized sepsis on August 13, 1865. Semmelweis's death is also tragic in that Semmelweis died of the very type of blood infection that he spent most of his life fighting to prevent. After Ignaz Semmelweis died, Janosch Deicher replaced him at the Pest University Maternity Clinic. Deicher had never been trained in obstetrics, and it was quickly apparent how little he abided by Semmelweis's theory. After Deicher took over, maternity mortality rates at the Pest Maternity Clinic, which had been consistently 1% under Semmelweis, jumped to 6%. But there were no protests and no inquiries among the physicians. Over the next 20 years, Louis Pasteur expanded germ theory, Joseph Lister elaborated on antiseptics and surgery, and in 1876, Robert Koch officially linked bacteria to infection for the first time. Even though Semmelweis attributed puerperal fever to decaying matter rather than bacterium, his conclusions on antisepsis and asepsis remained entirely correct. During his lifetime, Semmelweis was considered an angry, unstable man to be pushed out of the medical industry at worst, and derided as an irritating eccentric at best. By the end of the 19th century, many countries expressed their regrets at the treatment of Semmelweis, but by that point, countless lives had been sacrificed by his opposition. In 1897, the Congress of the German Gynecological Society's Weifel declared that Semmelweis's discovery ushered in a new era in medicine. But more than 100 years later, physician adherence to hand washing only averages about 57%. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.